Hey everybody, how are you doing? Nick Costa here and welcome to video two of our Ludwig restoration. In case you didn't see the first video, I am in the process of restoring a Ludwig downbeat kit that's either from 1967 or early 1968. In the first video, we were starting to take the drums apart and clean them, polish up the hardware, and put the toms back together. In this video, we're gonna be diving into the snare drum and a little bit more of restoring the rest of the kit. Before we dive into this video, there are a couple things I need to correct from the first video. The first thing I wanna talk about is the finish of the kit. Uh, I accidentally labeled it as a blue oyster, and it's not blue oyster, it's sky blue pearl. So thank you to all of those who informed me of that. The other thing is some people were saying that this drum kit could be either a late 67 or early 68 kit. So just to make sure that we are being accurate, we're going to identify this as either a late 67 or early 68 drum kit. Another thing I wanna address really quick too is the snare drum. Like we said in the first video, the snare drum is from that transition era between WFL and Ludwig. We also showed how the inside of the shell was spray painted with some kind of metallic gold paint. Now before we go into touching this drum, here is a fair warning for everybody. We are gonna be doing some things that some people will believe is going to reduce the value of this drum. The way that I see it is that the inside of the drum has already been spray painted with some kind of metallic gold paint, and I'm gonna try my best to remove it from the shell. I have no intentions of selling these drums like I've said before, so as far as vintage resale value is concerned, I'm not too worried about that. So you are gonna see me doing some things to the shell. It may make you cringe, but we're gonna try our best to get rid of that gold paint and try and get that white inside shell finish to actually show up. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, now that we are set up ready to go, the first thing that I wanted to do is show you guys something that I was doing before I started videotaping. And basically I was looking at the inside of the shell and trying to figure out what would be the safest way to try and remove this gold paint without removing again, that white paint that was from the Ludwig factory from back in the 60s. So I tried a couple things, I was doing some research, some people were saying that you should use paint remover, but I'm thinking if that's a white paint and you're using paint remover, you're gonna remove all of the paint. Um, so I actually grabbed some of my wife's nail polish remover because it has acetone in it, and it took the gold off without any issues, and it still kept the white under. So if you can see a little bit inside the shell, I know it's hard to see, but, you can see that some of it was already removed. I even tried sanding it, but sanding it wasn't really doing the job. So what I ended up doing, instead of using my wife's nail polish remover, I just went out and got some acetone. Now we do have to be very careful with the acetone when we're using it in here, so we're gonna actually be using some heavy duty industrial grade gloves to make sure that I don't irritate my hands while doing this. And we're only gonna be using a very little bit of it because it is very strong, it's acetone. Uh, and we are indoors, so we have to be very careful. All right, so just to make sure that uh, we are taking care of my house, and because I am particular about making sure that we keep it clean and don't destroy it, uh, we put some towels down on the floor. Uh, I have industrial grade gloves on, so that should help. I also have a bag, so any of the rags that we're gonna use that are gonna be soaked in acetone uh, can be immediately put in the bag, and then we'll just dispose of that. So. We're gonna take a cloth, take a shop rag, fold it in half, and then fold it again so it's in quarters, and then we are going to open the acetone. All right, now that it's open, we're just gonna put a very little bit on the towel. I'm gonna to fold it again just to be safe. close container and we're going to wipe the inside of the shell. All right, so what I'm noticing is that if you put the acetone onto the towel or the shop rag and then lightly but quickly move it across the inside of the uh, shell, the gold comes off pretty fast. If you go scrub a little too hard or 
if you're real particular and in a spot for a long time, it looks like the white comes off just a little bit, but it is still there. Unfortunately, this is pretty bad. So we're at the point where we're just trying to get it to look the best we can possibly make it look. I have no idea why anybody would do this, but you know, people do stuff to drums all the time, like apply acetone to the inside of a shell because they have an idea or they want to try and do something. Maybe it's aesthetics, but either way, we're gonna try our best. It's never gonna look the way that it originally did with that beautiful white inside interior finish but it's gonna look a whole lot better than runny gold metallic. So, we're gonna continue. The hardest part of the edges, the inside of the shell. I think that's the best I'm gonna get it. Um, doesn't look pretty. I'll be honest, it doesn't. But what are you gonna do? I mean, you could leave it. I'd rather not leave it. I'd rather just remove it. Uh, but if I go too far, I'll hit the mahogany wood, which I think I've already done in some spots like up here. We're gonna get some water so we can wipe down the inside of the shell, remove any excess acetone. And dry it off. Okay, now that we are back and we've done everything we could for the inside of that shell, some will say that we made it worse, but as long as the drum sounds good, I'm okay with that. What we need to do next is we do need to start putting that snare drum back together before we start taking everything else apart. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the lugs, the receiver tubes, the springs put them all back together. Now a lot of people know about the trick of stuffing your lugs with cotton um, to help the vibrations. A lot of people talk about the spring itself. Sometimes you can hear it rattling, especially in recording sessions when you have microphones up close. So what we are going to do, because this is what I've done and it's worked for me, is I'm going to take the spring, cut a piece of microfiber towel off, wrap the spring in it, and then put it back in the lug. Need to get some scissors first, and then we should be good to go. shell has been cleaned it turned out okay uh, better than it was got rid of a lot of the dirt it's nice and smooth now shell wise interior of the shell uh, looks a lot better than it did before um, you can see however that the white paint is actually starting to come off that was a lot of it um, but it does look better than it did so the next step is to use some polishing compound on the outside of the shell and then put some wax on it and it's good to go, ready to be put back together.
so what is next for this drum kit? Well, the bass drum is taken apart. All of the hardware has to soak in that Blue Dawn and water solution for about 24 hours to clean it up. And then I'm gonna clean off the shell as well. We're gonna put all of that together and then we just have to wait for a few drum heads to arrive from Remo and we can start putting this together and testing it out and see what it sounds like. Another thing a lot of people were talking about that I do want to address is the actual bearing edge. In the first video, I did talk about maybe reshaping, retouching up the bearing edges. And I believe I'm gonna follow what everyone was saying. This drum kit is in really good shape and there's really no need to address those bearing edges or touch them up unless they absolutely don't tune and don't sound good. Besides, why do I wanna to touch them up and get rid of that vintage sound? So what we're gonna do is we are going to leave the bearing edges as is put new heads on them, make sure they sound good. On top of that, there are some hardware things that we are not going to replace, like for example, the rail mount on the bass drum. We're gonna keep it as is, and we're gonna find adapters to make it easier to adjust the rail mount when I have to take it to gigs. That is it, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for video three, where we're gonna finish putting this drum kit together and finally take it for a test run. Until next time, see ya.